uh, expect a chuck start in right field? Anytime? No, you shouldn't because he had his one opportunity. And I'll be dang if it wasn't a really difficult one. So I didn't say it to the team. I would have I would have said it out there, but I was trying to keep things real short. Coach Anderson always talks about all the baseballs he's seen, all the baseball he's seen, and all the guys he's coached. Guys who do things right all the time seem to get breaks more than other guys. It's just what Zen, karma, good luck, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, in that situation, the ball drops and, and Chuck's got a teammate to pick him up. And maybe that's because he's always picking up his teammates. But it, it actually almost kind of worked out like he made an assist to set up a sports center type play. So kudos to Colby Backus and Hunley's another great kid that deserves every break he gets. So maybe all that mojo right there had something to do with it. But at the end of the day, I don't think we need to see that again. Brady Robertson asked, seems like his last couple of outings have been pretty good. Yeah, tonight me and Frank were discussing in the dugout, so we we're on the same page with you. It was good. I mean, you know, the, these kids, they're, they're worried about stat lines and who gets this and that, and it's, it's cool. We had you know, we've got records and stuff being kept, but um, what, what, what our job is to assess, like, how it goes down. I mean, a guy might get hit around in the park, but we really like the way he threw, and then another guy might get three quick outs but or get three outs, but, you know, it didn't look right or he didn't execute. So, um, regardless, he threw the ball really well tonight and seems to be picking up some steam um, after a little bit of inactivity with some soreness, and then, you know, also it's his first year of, of getting college action. Double, just what kind of went right from your vantage point and how about I don't know if I'm only doing it from you know an obser observation type type standpoint but you know his first at bat was tremendous of his career you could see that build up of wanting to be a part of college baseball and then the injury he just wants to be out there and he looks so determined in that at bat and then you know he hasn't had a bunch of repetitions pile up but he kind of looked he didn't look like himself for whatever reason and that last at bat it looked like he kind of just said the heck with it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my swing off, and he's got a good swing. I know you guys people are ooing and on about a play he made in the hole there, um, so it's obvious he can defend, but he's fully capable offensively as well. Obviously, baseball is a game where things can change quickly, but the way that your offense is producing right now is this sort of what you envision this offense could be something like this. Uh, we we thought it was a pretty good group, so I mean I don't think you jump ahead to where you try and predict numbers or. You know, I remember when I was playing, you'd look at the schedule and you'd, you'd try and predict all kinds of different things or, um, you know, pretend you know exactly what's going to happen. But um, I think the depth is something you talk about in the fall and the start of the season. But when the season starts, you're like, I hope we still have nine guys we're confident. So I think we knew we'd be able to hit. I think we knew we were capable of doing some things. But the thing that's been nice is that depth has kind of stayed there and if anything, it, it might be kind of building a little bit with, with how some of the guys did, you know, either tonight or recently. How good was it to see Cannon kind of get that run, uh, run scoring hit to kind of get him going a little bit? Yeah, I think to relax and, and play. Uh, I think, um, you know, I haven't said it to him, but I think there's a lot of extra stuff that goes on, uh, not just for him, but for others. If the results don't go the way that you want, you start adding a bunch of things that, that aren't necessarily there. I don't, I don't have a good analogy for it. Um, but, you know, maybe if you're cooking something up and something doesn't taste right, you don't add five or six different things. Uh, but I think these kids kind of tend to do that. And all of a sudden you got a mess on your hands with whatever meal you're trying to cook. So um, for him and, and for some others, too, it's nice to get a little bit of positive feedback from the game so they can relax and get back to what what is just their version of playing ball. And if he just plays ball and, and eliminates some of the extra stuff, you'll see the, the guy that you saw at various points in the fall or last year, and quite frankly, a few times this spring as well. You'll see that guy, I don't know if emerge is the right word, but just be present and, and be available to his teammates. What you all saw from J.J. Garcia that kind of matched the results that he put out there? Yeah, I mean, um, really through one good slider um, that, that kind of caught everybody's eye in the corner, and he's kind of worked to add that to be able to keep balls away from righties. Um, but I thought all the guys did well. Um, they got two or three guys in that lineup that can really like noticeably swing it, not to discredit anybody else. Um, and he had to get through, you know, one of those guys. So to do his job the way he did was good. But again, I think that those guys are all hungry to pitch with Xander being out of the mix. I think there's some guys salivating or understanding that there's innings up for grabs and they want to take advantage of them, whether it be on, you know, a Tuesday or, you know, an opportunity that comes from throwing well on a Tuesday. 
Uh, I think that the coaches can trust him. Uh, not this that he has the athleticism to play a different spot, but you got to have the knowledge too. Um, you know, first base, for instance. Yeah, you just got to catch it, but there's a lot of intricacies of that position that you need to also have an understanding of. So just to get repetitions or just to be athletic enough to run around doesn't mean, um, you know, you know how to make an important play or a play that calls for a little bit of baseball knowledge. And I think we can use Chuck there, our, our buddy Chuck, as an example in, in right field. I don't know which category he came up short. Maybe maybe his height uh, in, in, that, in that particular situation. But, uh, but no, I, I think for the utility thing, it is such a valuable part of college baseball and now Major League Baseball. And I love that Nats quote that they had about Trey Lipscomb. He had yet to make the roster for the big league team, and they were talking about how valuable it is that he knows how to play every position on the field. And a part of that is a great athlete and a great kid, um, but also he's, he's done it. He's run around at all those spots. Yeah, I think I kind of called him our Ben Zobrist. Um, you know, uh, my family and I were able to see that game where he became the MVP and, and wins game seven, that big hit down the third baseline. Uh, but also that was where Major League Baseball, I think, really kind of rubber stamped the fact that if you can be a utility guy um, like, like Zobrist, or I'm sure there's other examples too, Jose Oquendo, if you're from St. Louis. There's a great song on Jose Oquendo on YouTube, by the way. Uh, side note. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I think now it's, it's seen as a, a real positive, whereas in the past it might have been, hey, you got to master one spot. Well, if you're a great third baseman, but, you know, you got another good third baseman on your team, you don't want to sit there and watch the game. You want to find a way to be involved somewhere else.